Easiest part of the schedule. Can the Dodgers capitalize? Sweep. Hey guys, welcome to the newest edition of Lab Talk. Mason, the Dodgers are going through their easiest part of the schedule throughout the whole season. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get any easier. What have they done so far? Uh, six and two as of right now. Uh, game three of the White Sox is Wednesday. As we speak. Wednesday. 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 Uh, is going on right now. They're six and two. Um, did what they needed to in Colorado. I mean, two games against the Angels, and then you go to Chicago to play in the South Side against the White Sox. You need to win them all. Six and two is pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, they went into the Colorado series and. You said it yourself in the last podcast. They needed to win at least three out of yeah. four. They did just that. They did. And let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So game one, it was Paxton on the mound, sweet maple, and he was... Big maple. So good. He was sweet again. Yeah. I mean, he's just doing what he needs to do. He's, um, you know, doing a lot better staying in the zone, not a lot of walks, uh, striking a lot of guys out, and just pumping the strike zone. And we're not used to Shohei being in the leadoff spot, but due to Mookie's absence... Weird. Weird. Strange. Due to Mookie's absence, uh, he's in that leadoff spot, and he has flourished as a leadoff hitter. Uh, he's the best. Uh, even when my vote right now is even when Mookie comes back, just leave, leave Shohei at the, at, at the leadoff spot. I mean, he's, do, he's doing what leadoff players should do. Get on base, get runs in. I mean, one swing, one run. Sounds good to me. He's been doing it the last two games against the White Sox. Keep it up. Back to the Colorado series. Back to the Colorado series. Paxton going seven in this one, allowing yeah. just one run. So good. Picking up his seventh win of the year, and um, he's he's been excellent for the Dodgers. Sneaky pickup. Sneaky pickup. Yeah. We love that. Otani going three for five in this one, driving in some runs. What else is new? The rest of the offense coming through as well. Yes, Dodgers thankfully. getting out to an early three to nothing lead. And then they added six over the last three innings. That's really good. Uh, good teams score throughout the game, not just the beginning. You know what? Last year, a lot of, you know, last year they were just scoring in the beginning of, of games, getting an early lead, and then not doing anything later. So it's not good. You don't want the team to feel comfortable. You always want them thinking, who's going to hit, get the hit next? So keep that up. And it wasn't just Otani with three hits in this one. Miggy Rowe, he's been, he's been nice. I mean, every time he's getting a hit, we're winning the games. We haven't lost a game if he gets a hit. So, keep him in. A perfect 23-0. Yes. Every time Miggy gets a hit, it's, it's a win. It's a win. So, yeah, and he's going to get a lot more playing time with Mookie Betts not in the in that starting spot, shortstop. So, I mean, leave, leave Mickey, Miggy there. He's, he's you know, consistently getting some hits. He's not producing multi-hit games every single time he's going out, but... At least he's getting on base. He's producing. He's doing what he needs to do better than last year. And best defensive shortstop, in my opinion, in the National League. We like that. Keep that up. So let's move on to game two. Um, this one was a little bit closer. Came down to the wire, and it wasn't looking good there for the Dodgers until that ninth no, no, no. inning. How many runs did they score in the ninth? They inning? scored seven runs. In three outs. Wow. With just three outs to go, they scored seven runs. It was an amazing game that I didn't see because I turned it off and then I think I went to the store or something. I thought, this game's over. Don't want to watch it. Was mad. Disappointed and missed it. You were, but you were mowing the lawn. You that's what I was doing. You yeah. texted me that. You're I did. I was really upset. Turned it off and thought, I'm just going to do something productive because I'm just sitting here watching my favorite team lose. I was mad. <laughs> turned it off. Went and mowed the lawn. Came back. Saw that they won. Totally upset with myself, but still got to see all the highlights. I watched it over the next two to three days, just going, <laughs> nice. So it was great. And you had phenomenal, comeback. phenomenal. You had Pajes with a home run in this one. Otani hitting his twentieth jack of the year in the sixth, and then the big inning in the ninth. You had Hayward with a home run, huge, and then the big one. Oscar Hernandez with that huge three-run home run to put the Dodgers over the edge, and that's yes. all it took. It was fantastic game. Um, they, I mean, if I was the umpire, probably would have said he swung. But why the Rockies dug out and Bud Black 
specifically was really upset was because uh, the first base umpire said it wasn't even close. Pretty close. So I, that's why he was upset. I mean, it, it was a toss up. It's the most gray rule in all of sports, in my opinion. There's not just a definitive yes, no, did, did not, coulda, woulda, shoulda. He didn't. In the umpire's eyes, saved the game for us. As soon as the ball left the park, the right fielder was just screaming at the door, that's on you. That's on you. Hilarious. That was hilarious. That was my best. He, he goes to the wall, he goes to the wall, immediately, as soon as the ball goes over the wall, Jake Cave turns and starts yelling at the umpire. He goes, that's all you that you will be able. So funny. Hey, make better pitches. You don't want to throw 101 dead red. You got to get that ball up. I mean, he chased at the last one. I guarantee it was a missed pitch. He was trying to get it up. But hey, I mean, sucks to suck. The ball flies in Colorado. Yes. And it flew the Dodgers way. Oh my gosh. Best game of the year so far. Best comeback win. I think Dodgers history, maybe? We'll have to look that up to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that was one of, if not the biggest deficit they had to come back in the ninth. And and did. In, in, baseball, <laughs> in baseball, there's no clock. No. You got to get all 27 outs. The Rockies couldn't do that. Nope. And you never know what can happen. Sucks to suck. Sucks to suck. Losers lose. Let's go to game three, Mason. This one, not going the Dodgers' way. Yeah, close game. Bobby Miller making his much-anticipated return to this rotation. There were some good signs, yeah. uh, but still allowing five runs on six hits in this one, striking out only two. He walked yeah. three. Um, but the bullpen not getting the job done, allowing two runs in the seventh, and uh, Rockies yeah. battling back to tie it up. And then you had the walk-off sack fly in the ninth. Lame. Dodgers getting a loss in this one. Super lame way to win a ball game on a sack fly. That was yeah, stupid. I mean, if you're going to win, win's a win. It doesn't matter. But, I mean, good for Colorado. They don't get much of them, so you got to dig it out when you can. If you're going to win, that's a lame way to win. Super lame, but the Rockies getting their 26th win of the year in this one, mm -hmm. thanks to Brenton Doyle. What a name. Doyle. A Doyle rule. A Doyle rules. A Doyle rules. A Doyle rules. He ruled it in this one. Ramirez getting the loss for the Dodgers. Lame. But Dodgers with a chance to still win the series in Game Four. They did just that with one of our favorite guys, Gavin yes. Stone, on the bump. Yes. Most consistent pitcher we've had all season so far. Glasnow. Yes, our ace. Stone most consistent. He's the guy that I would want on the bump in game three of a World Series game. He's the guy where it's, you know, you win game one, lose game two, that deciding game. He's the guy going on the bump. Hands down. Put him out there. Gavin going five and a third in this one, allowing yep. just two runs. Struck out seven. His strikeout numbers have been going up a little bit. Yep. He's got that swing and miss stuff this year. He's really got a lot of downward movement on his sinker this year, along with his changeup. That's just devastating. I mean, it's a plus-plus pitch to a lot of people's to a lot of people's scouting reports. So, I mean, he's just got the stuff to make it look like a strike for so long and then just leave the strike zone. Great, great, consistent guy. I went on the bump every fifth day. Absolutely. We I saw have. our big arms come through in this one. Yes. You had Trinan going two-thirds of an inning, nothing allowed. So Daniel good. Hudson coming in, his 11th hold of the season. So good. Bessia coming in, he gave up a run in one inning. Uh, but still was able to strike out the side, three Ks there. Yeah. And then you had Evan Phillips closing it out for his 12th save of the year. I mean, he's – they always I, – I was one of those guys who got to go out and get a closer. They had the closer. Just put him in the ninth. Phillips, he's the guy. He's the guy I want in the ninth all the time. He's the guy that – I mean, other than like one, I think, opportunity I've seen live, he's shutting it down super comfortable. I feel comfortable every time he comes up. Shut it down. He's John just Tapper, stuck. shut it down. <laughs> Great show. There you go. And then Otani with a leadoff home run in this one. Leave him in the leadoff spot. I, yeah. I, I mean, they're not going to, especially when Mookie comes back, because that's his spot. He's earned it, of course. But Shohei's making an argument. I, I could argue that. Just leave him in there. He's getting a lot of fastballs. He's getting a lot of mistakes, because pitchers, you know, that first at-bat, the first batter to come up, that first at bat, they're really like trying to get into the rhythm. Shohei's just ambushing them. First pitch or just that first straight fastball he's getting, he's taking it. He's taking it deep. See you, ball. Bye. 
We also had Will Smith playing long ball in this one. Freddie Freeman. They both got their 11th home runs of the year. And Smith was just, he was getting close the whole series. He was getting it, you know, at the wall, uh, a lot of warning track stuff, and finally got a hold of one and just connected. So Freddie's been getting hot too. Cannot overlook that guy. He's just the MVP in your lineup that everybody's like, oh yeah, and we have Freddie. Yeah, no, he's definitely being Freddie of old, getting it done. Steady Freddy. Steady Freddy. Heating up. Yeah. Good stuff there. Let's move on to the freeway series. The Angels came to town. First game didn't <clears throat> go the Dodgers' way, but Otani, guess what he did again? Did he hit a run? He did. Number 22 of the year for Otani nah. against his former team. Artie Morrell, thanks for keeping the team. Um, allowed Shohei to come to L.A. We owe it to you. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> And we saw the return of Landon Knack, who has been spectacular. Stuff, man. Knacktacular stuff. The last two to three seasons, just these rookies are coming up and producing. It's it's crazy. I mean, Pepio, when he came up, phenomenal. Um, Sheehan coming up, phenomenal. Dustin May, missed that guy, phenomenal. And now you got Landon Knack just coming out. Who is this guy? Shoving. That's who he is. That's who he hits. He went five in this one, getting the no decision after allowing just two hits, no runs allowed by Knack. Um, and then you had the bullpen, Ryan Yarbrough allowing two runs. But oh. he's he's been he's been the consistent yeah. long reliever that we needed him to be. Is he gonna shut everybody down every time? No, but he's gonna get you, you know, four or five innings in a ball game. Whatever you need, he's that guy. He's gonna give up some runs, but as long as it's you know two, three runs within those five innings. You should be able to win that ball game. There's no reason for you to lose a ball game by two runs. Step it up. Step it up. So Dodgers dropping this one yeah. three to two. How Oops. many left on base? That's what I want to know because when the Dodgers lose a game, they leave too many on base. Near double digits almost every single loss. Well, they left four on base in this one, 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. There you go. And that's that's what happens. You don't drive in runs, you don't win. Yeah. I mean, good pitching performance on both sides, 3 to 2 game. That's a, that's a really good, you know, pitching performance on both sides if you're only winning 3 to 2. The Rockies game that we won and came back, it was 11 to 9. So I mean, just total opposites here. You know when you're playing in Colorado versus LA. And then Dodgers looking to split it in game 2. This was a quick two game series. And we had our guy Glasnow on the mound. Ugh. Seven innings, just two runs allowed. Struck mm. out ten again. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's against the Angels, who are bottom fourth team, worst fourth worst team in all of baseball. It's still a pro club. Shut them down. So good. Six foot eleven, just shoving. Sorry, seven foot twelve, shoving. Just, Nine feet tall, dude. He's just phenomenal. It's crazy. He gets taller every time he goes out there. Every time he goes out there, he's Hair taller. Gets longer, he's Hair gets taller. longer. Fastball is just hitting 99, and then that wicked curve. It's so hard to hit that. And he Gross. was throwing it in the zone, hitting the bottom of the zone, freezing everybody. Can't hit that. Really Can't good producing performance. Really good stuff here. We had a home run from Lux, his second of the year. He's starting to turn it up just a little bit. Just a little bit. He's, 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 he's not as consistent as he wants to be as a fan. Not what we want to see. He's finally easing into where he's comfortable at the plate. I mean, you're not, if you don't see live pitching for over a year in the big leagues, it's hard to come right back to the big leagues yep. and try to produce. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the fact that it took spring training, May, <laughs> spring training in March, April, May, almost the end of June, and he's finally producing, it's going to take some time. But the fact that it's not August and he's finally producing is a good sign. So, um, keep him in there. He's he's he swings the bat hard. He hits the ball when he connects very very hard. I want him to be the guy that we always see him to be, a prospect that nobody wanted to trade in the Dodgers system, keeping him for a reason. And I think we're about to see it. He's gonna take off. And it's not just Lux at the bottom of the lineup. We've been harping on yes. six through nine. Yes. He needs to step it up over the last month. Six through nine for the Dodgers have had the best OPS in baseball. Otani, another home run. He loves hitting against the Angels. Three and three games. Three and three games. Just 23 phenomenal. on the season for him. And he's just, he continues to blow yep. our minds. Yeah, it's it's 
crazy. I mean, Doc has played with some of the best or against some of the best players in all of baseball of all time. And every single time he does something, Doc will turn to a camera and say, oh, wow, 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 wow. Good stuff. Just take it in. We still got nine more seasons of this. We're not even halfway through this season and we're still like, I'm going to miss him. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Let it sink in, guys. Crazy, crazy stuff. So Dodgers putting the Angels away, winning this one 7-2 to two to split the series. And then the Dodgers headed to the south side to face the worst team in baseball. Just 21 <laughs> wins on the season. And the Dodgers Stink. taking advantage of games that they're supposed to win. Yes. If you combine the Rockies and the White Sox records, the Dodgers still have more wins. How about that? That sucks. That really does. It sucks Trash. to suck. That's bad. Losers lose. Sucks so. to suck. How about Loser. that? Loser. Mickey Rowe getting two hits in this one. Again, the Dodgers 23-0 yeah. when Miguel Rojas gets a hit. Yeah. Suck on that, Jazz Chisholm. That sucks. That's all I have to say. You, you woke up, you know, the sleeping beast. Paxton again in this one. He was real sweet, real nice. Super good. Five innings. Getting a no decision in this one, but not allowing any runs. Three the hits. win going to Daniel Hudson in this one. He's been lights out all yes. year. And Vessia picking up his fourth save of the season. His ERA now down below 1.3. He's at wow. a one two six. Wow. That's really, really good. I don't I'm, even remember the last time he allowed a run. Uh, probably the last time we were talking... Actually, he did in the, in the Colorado series. He did. He did give we it just, a run. We just talked about it. Yeah. I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an, an idiot. idiot. You're an idiot. Shout out, Grinch. How about that? Dodgers just one for eight with runners in scoring position in this one. Left eight on base, but still shutting out the White Sox winning this one 3 to nothing. Yeah, the White Sox lineup is the worst in baseball with runners in scoring position. I think you could argue the worst with any runners on, not just in the scoring position, because they have a terrible run differential. I think it's negative 100 and something. I could look it up at right now, and it's negative, terrible. At least negative 150. At least. If I had to guess, negative 182. I want to look it up right now. Look it up right this second. Don't you wait. Minus, uh, minus 168. I was close. Mason, you were close. we've talked about run differential before, but explain again, what does it mean? So run differential means the difference between the runs you scored versus the runs that you've given up. So you as a team, how many have you scored? Subtract the number you've given up as a team, i.e. the pitching staff. Combine that, whatever total, you want it to be positive, meaning you scored more runs than you've given up. The White Sox have given up 168 more runs than they've scored themselves. Wow. The worst in baseball. The Dodgers, on the other side of the coin, are second only to the Phillies by two runs. By two. We're, so we're two runs away from being first in baseball. Right we have plus... 116. So we've scored 116 more runs than we've given up. A good baseball club will always have a positive run differential. Blah, blah, blah. We'll have a blah, 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 blah. good baseball. <laughs> good baseball teams will always have a positive run differential compared to a worse baseball team, i.e. Chicago White Sox Cubs aren't part of the line. But still, both Chicago teams are in the negative. So you want to be positive. To be a winning team. Not to kick 26 guys while they're down, but the White Sox are on track to be the worst team in baseball history. They're projected <laughs> to lose 120 games this season. They're only That's for, a long season. Uh, that sucks. That sucks to be on that team. And what sucks more for Tommy Pham, he played in the World Series last year, yeah. and now he's on the worst team in baseball this year. It just, that's baseball, man. It he sucks, is sucks. praying for a trade at the deadline. Get oh, me yeah. out of town. So is Luis Robert Jr. A lot of teams, I could think of probably five teams that would love to have him and have the depth to be able to give the White Sox whatever they're asking for. And the White Sox could probably ask for five players for him. And we also saw Garrett Crochet on the bump for the White Sox in this one. Another guy who is going to be on the trading block. He's got two years of control. 
Good. Before hitting free agency, he's nasty only, stuff. He's an only good pitcher. Stuff. His ERA is down to three. Everybody else is four plus. So he's the only pitcher that's producing. So good. Let's go to game two. This one a little closer, a little more interesting. White Sox tagging Bobby Miller for three runs in the bottom of the first. He only went two in this one. Um, so, you know, he, he's going to take some time to, yeah. to come back and, and ease into things. But um, Michael Peterson, with his second win that's on good. the season, he debuted a couple weeks ago. Okay. So that's a big guy. Big guy. A lot of big guys around here. Big guy. I mean, they have the arm pitching velocity. I mean, just 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 right at you stuff. Just just get right up on you, right too fast. So, uh, yeah, Miller, this is his second start uh, in Chicago. The first one was against the Cubs before he got hurt, and it was the same thing. He didn't even get through two innings on that one. He got one and two-thirds and then was just yanked out of there. Just it's not his season. Last year, rookie season, coming out, throwing ace. This year, didn't have that stuff, got hurt, trying to come back into it. It's a tough sophomore season for almost every good freshman season. It's also fall. It's always, oh, man, that's not a... Um, <laughs> the sophomore season following a really good freshman season, typically, more often than not, is bad. At least not as good as the freshman season. But big leaguers, they adjust, they get acclimated, they come back, produce. So Bobby Miller, I don't think he's going to be able to have a good rest of the season. Do we need him? Yeah. Do we hope that he can come back and produce? Yeah. Is it likely? I don't think so. You heard it here. Bobby Miller is going to come back perfect next year. Not this year. We'll have to wait and see. Dodgers, again, just one for six in this one with runners in the scoring position. Bad. Seven left on base. Bad. But when you look at the other side of the coin, White Sox 0 for 9, 10 left on base. <laughs> again, really bad with runners in scoring position Terrible. for the White Sox. Uh, but you know what doesn't matter when you don't have anybody in scoring position? When Shohei Otani is hitting home runs, he yeah. did it again in this one. He did it again. Lead off bomb, 24th of the season for Shohei. And this was game two. So, I mean, he's got another chance in game three. We'll get to that because it's on right now. Um, At the we'll get there. We'll get there. But, yeah, um, Ben and Tenney. I was, I was surprised when he left Boston because I always thought, man, he's probably going to be your you know franchise guy. Great, great season last year in 23. So far, batting uh, 203. So terrible season so far. Launched that ball against Bob Miller for his pitch. Yes, he did. Terrible. You know who else launched the ball? Freddie Freeman, his Yay. 12th of the year. Again, Freddie really heating up. Oh, yeah. And um, his the, average is up to, oh, down to 300, but 300 nonetheless. 300 nonetheless. Steady Freddie. Dodgers coming away with a win in this one to win the series for mm -hmm. to three in this ball game. Um, and we'll move on to game three, which is happening at the moment. Yep. And what did Shohei Otani do to start this ball game? Uh, hit another home run. Wow. So he's, I mean, hit two leadoff home runs in the last two games. Just phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Leave him in the, leave him in the starting spot of the lineup, please, I beg you. One NL player of the week last week on his way to do it again, and it's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday. Dodgers leading four to nothing right now. Wow. When wow. I checked, it was like one to nothing. So what happened? Freddie Freeman with two RBIs. Teoscar wow. Hernandez with a run driven in. And this one, he's been driving in a whole lot of runs. So good. He's right on the cusp of making the All Star team. Miggy Rowe with a double in this one. So it's an automatic win. So it's an automatic win. It's going to be twenty four and zero every time Miggy gets a win after this game. It's just automatic. Every time he gets a hit, I know we're going to win. Don't even have to ask. Don't even ask. Just believe it. There you go. So, Dodgers still one for five. They, they haven't been relying on getting hits with runners in scoring position, but they're getting no. the job done. They are getting the job done. And and luckily, that I mean, that's only happening because you're playing the Rockies, the Angels, the White Sox. you got the Giants next, which is the best team of the four, but still not good. I mean, they're bottom seven in MLB right now as far as record goes and what sucks is because we have a lot of family that like the Giants sucks to suck sucks but to suck. but I feel bad because 
most of their roster is hurt. So the team that's playing right now isn't the team. It isn't even half the team that they were supposed to be at the beginning of the season. San Francisco, where the Dodgers are headed after this series in Chicago. They're going yeah. to San Francisco, and it's going to be Landon Knack on the bump in game one. He's going up so against good. one of our favorite pitchers, TBD. TBD. Who is it? We don't know. But love that Knack's on the bump. He's one on one, 18 strikeouts, 210 ERA. Uh, doesn't tell me how many innings, but he's just coming back from being hurt a little bit. But just every time he's out there, he's just getting it done. He's striking guys out. He's blowing it by them. He's really, really, really hitting spots. And that's the difference between somebody that's producing in the pros or for the Dodgers in general and somebody who's not. Brendan Knack, Gavin Stone, hitting the spots. You don't have to throw 100. But if you got some movement and you're hitting the spots or making it seem like it's a strike for 80% of the time and then dives away, Bobby Miller right now, Bueller missing everything in the zone, that's the difference. If they can start hitting their spots, you don't even have to have the best stuff. But if you can miss just off rather than down the middle, night and day different. Landon's got a knack for throwing strikes. He fills uh, up uh, the zone. Uh, uh, he liked that one. He slapped it. He liked it. That was a good one. I hope you liked it too. Let's move on to game two. Giants hey. are going to see some tough pitching in this one. It's going to be Glass now against TBD. Yep. The Giants TBD. have no idea who's pitching. <sighs> yeah. Um, every fan wants to know. They don't even know. So that sucks. But Glass now eight and five on the season, two eight eight ERA, over one hundred thirty five strikeouts. And I know this one, one hundred thirty five strikeouts in a hundred innings. This is only the third time in his career, and he's this is his eighth, seventh, eighth season. Only his third time in his career pitching a, at least a hundred innings. So <laughs> it's his first year in Dodger Blue. We got four more after this one. Keep it up, Mister Consistent, right now. Consistency is key. Let's so go to game three, and it's going to be Sweet Maple. 7-1? and one? Sweet Maple. He's got a 7-1 and one record. It's not just him. Of course, you need some runs behind him. But it, it still means something. It means that you're still pitching to outs. And he's got an ERA of over 3, 3.39. But I think a lot of that is because he was walking a lot of guys in the beginning. Yep. He has definitely dialed it in, and he's pitching a lot more in the zone, getting a lot more swing and miss. That's what we need. Yep. What we also need is you guys to go vote on the All-Star game. Yes. Vote for some Dodgers. Freddie is second in All-Star voting for first base, right behind Bryce Harper. No. Bryce Harper's having a nice season. No, no, no. You're not a Harper fan? Um, You're going to harp on Harper? I am going to harp on Harper because Freddie is Mr. Consistent. Um, Harper is Mr. Benedict Arnold for all the national fans. So, I mean, what a loser. Um Definitely hits the ball hard, but who's got the better average? And if I had to guess, it's Freddie, because I doubt Harper, other than his MVP season, uh, has a better average than Freddie. Ooh, no, he's, he's got him beat by him out. Harper's having a nice year. 100. 20 home runs, 57 oh. RBIs to Freddie's 48. RBI and 12 home runs, and he's a couple ticks better in the average department. So, well-deserved by Harper. Mookie's not going to be in the All-Star game because of his injury, but he's at first in the All-Star voting for a shortstop. That's crazy. And then, of course, Shohei Otani at DH is leading. Nobody's going to catch up to him. No. Um, and then you've got Teoscar Hernandez is third for outfielders. So, Dodger Keep fans, go out, cast your votes. Um, Manny Loser. Machado, a very undeserved second at third base. Um, what a tool. Loser. Starting fights, causing drama, only hitting 260. Loser. Just eight home runs for Manny, so he's having a down year. What a, uh, a well deserved down year for Manny Machado there. Yeah, good. Point of the story go out and vote. Make sure your Dodgers are in the All Star game. Let's do it. How is Real Muto? beating Will Smith when Will Smith... I hate the popularity contest of yeah. this yeah. because Will Smith has a better average, more home runs, over double the RBIs, and over 100 points better OPS than JT Muto. What is up with that? It's only because the Phillies are in first. Good for them. They are a good ball club. But Real Muto is not a better catcher. It's a popularity contest. Go vote. Go, go vote. vote. This is only the first phase of voting. Uh, 
Let's hell? stack this roster with Dodgers. Let's make it happen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. A lot more baseball coming up. Let's hope they win today's ball game and sweep the White Sox and then have a great plane ride back to San Francisco. As soon as they land, it's going to smell terrible. Poop Why, man? Poop, Poop in the streets. It sucks. Couldn't have said it better myself. Let's cut it off right there. Let's go Dodgers. Adios. Cool. Cool.